I'm Anthony L. Elmore. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. I am best known in Memphis, Tennessee as the five-time world karate kickboxing champion. It was in 1987 where we wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the first movie of anyone, black or white, we produced the first independent film called The Contemporary Gladiator. In 1987, I was the first independent 35 millimeter theatrical filmmaker. If you want to make a film to show at a movie theater, you had to shoot a 35 millimeter film. Now, just the cost of film stock, developing film was enough to prevent an independent filmmaker from making a movie. Not only did we complete the making of a 35 millimeter film, we incorporated a unique digital technology that allowed us to not only make a film, the technology allowed us the ability to make a kickboxing film that is perhaps the most authentic karate kickboxing film in the history of filmmaking. You see, today, most films are made using digital technology. In 1987-88, while producing our film, we used a digital technology called a film recorder. Now, this is a graphical output device for transferring images to a photographic film from a digital source. In a typical film recorder, an image is passed from a host computer to a mechanism to expose film through a variety of methods, historically by direct photography of a high resolution cathode ray tube display. Now, the exposed film can then be developed using conventional developing techniques. Let me put this in a language that you can understand. We simply use computer technology to convert video to 35 millimeter film. You see, instead of shooting a movie scene, we use actual video of real fight scenes and we then converted the video into 35 millimeter film. We then took the film and integrated the film into the movie, whereas you could not tell the video scenes from the actual fight scenes because the video was transformed uh, into film. Now, a Hollywood movie scene is staged movie action. In our film, we use actual fight footage. Unlike a movie like Rocky, whereas they use staging and acting to create a drama and excitement, we use actual footage to tell a dramatic story. Also today, The Amp gets his chance. Memphian Anthony The Amp Elmore has signed to fight for the world heavyweight title. He will take on the champ Woodrow Woodard at the Cook Convention Center. Now, who is Woodrow Woodard? Let's take a look. He's wearing the white trunks. He's 35 and 0, and this guy can be brutal. Watch the combinations. He'll pulverize you. Now, Amp Elmore is known for shooting off with his mouth. This time, he's really going to have to use his fist. <laughs> Boy, you better take a good look at this ring because after I get you in the ring, I'm gonna take your title and terminate your career. You too ugly to be the champion. You just a chump. You too ugly. Look at your old plow boy coming in old plaid shirt, stuff out of style. So I want you to get a stretch in my veil like me. Tell a made suit. See, son, I got jazz, booze ass, and the rest of the tass. But what you got? Oh, you ain't nothing but old boxer who trying to throw a kick. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You just a sucker. We didn't come here to be humiliated. Listen to your crap. My man do his talking in the ring. Let's go, Wood. Boy, I'm going to bust your ass. In 1988, we in Memphis created not just a film. In Memphis, a black Memphis theatrical filmmaker was born named Anthony Amp Elmore. It is one thing to call yourself 
a filmmaker, and another thing to have a film marketed worldwide and to see your film even translated in different languages. What is even more unique about this Memphis made film that it is perhaps the only martial arts or kickboxing movie about an actual world champion. Many world champions have acted in movies, but none have had their own movie made about them. Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan were martial arts, but neither were real world champions. The original film, The Contemporary Gladiator, was not just a black martial arts film and a true story. This film was a black movie. Check out these scenes. Tom, we drove 14 hours to get some of your good collard greens. Mm. Like I was saying, Pop, bomb was going off, bullets was flying, and I was ducking. Vietcom was everywhere. It was crazy out there. Hey, yeah, man, I ain't seen you eat no meat, man. I'm about to choke off these chitlins. Don't eat no poke, brother, man. Poke the number one killer black folk in America, man. That poke ain't good for you, brother. <laughs> what this nigga say? Poke ain't good for you. Nigga, you talk like a goddamn fool. Look here, man. Since y'all been gone, this water gone stone mad. Wearing that long ass hair, looking like a sissy by the head, talking that black power bullshit to me. Look here. Boy, I've been eating poke all of my life. Look how healthy I am. Your uncle is 105 years old and he's still healthy. You know, you're going to school every day, but you ain't learning a damn thing. I know you got a lot of book sense, but you ain't got no common sense. Mother would just be talking, and you ain't got none. Another thing, if you're going to stay in my house, you're going to cut that shit off your head, talking about Africa. Nigga, you don't know a son of a bitch in Africa. Taught you a skill, got you a job, and you go off and start a business. You don't know nothing about no business. All you want to do is kick your legs up in there with that karate stuff. Ain't no money in that shit, nigga. You always mess with me, man, getting on my case. Hey. I love my hat. This is my African heritage. Yeah, I kid. I love karate, man. Someday, I'm going to make karate school. I'm not like you, Pop. I'm not like you, man. I'm different. And another thing, man, I want to get out of your house. Because I'm not like you, man. Come on now, what's the problem? You and I have been dating for the last three years. And I have to admit that I've really enjoyed myself. And I've learned a lot. However, when we met, I was a young girl, just 18 years old, with no experience in life. Now I'm older and I have to think of my future. Brother, you and I fought side by side together in the movement, but where are we now? I'm sick and tired of Memphis. I'm tired of these conditions. I just want a different environment. I want to let you know that I've decided to go to Howard University next semester. I think I can grow a great deal at Howard. Sweetheart. Hey. I know that things are a bit frustrating. Hey, but we can work this out. Listen, I want to wait and show you this. But, hey, I want to marry you. Anthony, I'm still young. I'm not ready for marriage. I've got a lot of growing to do, and so do you. Three years ago, when you quit college to go into the carpet business, I was so disappointed in you. I really think you have a lot more promise than breaking your back in the carpet business. Hey, I don't know you felt that way. Tell you what, next semester I go back to school and I do it for you. I just need your support. Would you listen to yourself? Putting pressure on me to support you? If you were independent and a man, you would do these things for yourself and not need my support. I'm sorry, but I've decided to go and that's just the way it is. Just like that, huh? Just like that. First in America, the grand black history.
We can trace our history to 1879 We're American like history and that is so divine It all started in 1838 When the yellow hit the the whites and they fled Terry County In Memphis To avoid the other people and escape Black started on smile through grace and divine They started two black churches in 1879 One of the churches in the mounds That was started by some of us It's on Park Avenue And it's called Mount Pisgah There's another black church on Carnes That has a lot of us on fire The church is called Mount Moriah, Orange Mound, Orange Mound. You don't have to walk too far. You're in Orange Mound. You think you're in Africa.